so we have a foot of mulch. We have these six inch high raised beds. I've got what looks like cow patties in here, but it's actually old composted quail litter. So it's going to be spread out and break down into the mulch. That's going to help the wood chips break down so that the roots can go through the six inches of composted soil and right into the mulch. So as you see, we've got one bed down here and we've got a couple more to go. A lot of work, but it's going to pay off so well because these beds are being built the right way. This is how you build a raised bed garden. Odin, you're so good at this. So it took three wheelbarrows to get this bed full. I just have a few more to go. Uh -huh. Oh boy, it's gonna take longer than I thought. Too bad you're not strong enough to do the wheelbarrows, huh, Odin? I know you'd help. <laughs> Brothers aren't quite big enough either, are they? You're doing a good job of spreading it out. In the past, on our previous homestead, all I could do was a mounded bed garden because I couldn't afford the wood. We were lucky enough to receive all of this cedar wood as a gift. It was recycled from somebody else's project. We got to take the nails out of it and screws out of it and make our own beds with it. So we're super excited. These are gonna last us a long time. Definitely worth the work we're putting in now to have an amazing vegetable garden this year. Something I learned a long time ago in my gardening life and have applied to every garden I've ever worked at or owned is that your most important thing of all in your garden is not knowing how to take care of plants, not knowing how to control pests, but it's starting out with some good soil compost rich soil that will build the foundation of an amazing garden for your plants. So if you don't have a lot of money to invest in your garden this year, don't spend it on wood. Don't spend it on seeds and plants. Spend it on the soil. Get very good quality compost, add it to your beds, and it will pay off itself in the long run. Lots of times you can get plants like these that were being thrown away because they were extras left over from somebody else's project. You can also get seeds that way. Get to know your local gardeners and get to know your local farmers because I have found they are the most generous people there is. I give away so many seeds and plants to my local community anytime anybody asks for anything. I'm always willing to lend a helping hand. If you're local to me and you need some plants or some seeds to get started in your garden, 
hit me up. I'd be happy to help. And if you're not local, reach out to your local community. Join your local Facebook gardening groups and you're gonna find a wealth of resources there. There are people who are gonna help teach you how to garden for your local area and there's gonna be people that are willing to share their bounty. Don't be afraid to ask if anybody has any leftover plants or leftover seeds at the end of their planting and they'd be happy to share them with you most times. One of the biggest reasons a lot of us are doing this gardening journey is because we wanna be more sustainable. So don't feel like you have to spend a ton of money to be a good gardener. That is not what's going to make you a good gardener. But being thoughtful and really paying attention to your land and what it's asking you to do and providing a good amount of compost is just the right start for you. Just look what we've been able to accomplish. All of this was free. Or really spreading. Hey, now <laughs> keep it in the garden bed. Hold in. You're a punk. Stop it. Stop it. Uh oh, <laughs> somebody thinks it's funny. Okay, you can stop now. It's not cute anymore. Uh oh. Yeah, you're gonna get in trouble.